Good morning, hello, and welcome to the virtual village hall. I'm Rachel from I Printed That. And can you believe that it's just under a week where we can finally meet up with our friends and our family? Okay, so it's gonna to have to be outside. It can't be any more than six or two households. We'll have to be socially distant, so no kissing, no hugging. But as my mum says, let's focus on what we can do, not on what we can't do. So that gives us enough time to dust off their posh tea sets and also to print some napkins to complement them. And that's what I'm going to show you today, how to print these napkins using some really, really basic equipment. I'm going to show you how to make an ink pad with a jam jar lid and a piece of felt and some fabric paint, and then how to print the napkins using a cork. You can either use a plastic cork or a cork cork. So what I'm going to do is pop you down and I'll explain how that's all done. Start off again, make sure it's crease free and that it's lying nice and flat. So I've got mine on just a scrap piece of paper or you can use newspaper. That's just going to stop any ink that gets through getting onto your table. This technique is a great one if you're new to crafting because it's so simple to do. As long as you can dab a cork on an ink pad and then dab it onto some fabric, then you can print. I need to make up the ink pad first. So this is just normal fabric paint. Make sure that you do look at the manufacturer's instructions to find out how to make it colour fast. It's probably something like let it dry for 24 hours and then iron on the back. Um, but it will be the instructions will be on your fabric paint. This is a jam jar lid. And then I just cut a piece of felt that fits snugly inside. Now you don't have to make up an ink pad but I find it a lot easier than using a paintbrush to paint onto the cork every time you print. So I've just put about a teaspoon's worth of fabric paint onto the felt and just using the spoon, I'm just pushing it through the felt, letting it absorb the fabric paint. What I don't want is kind of these large bits of fabric paint on the felt. I want it to go right the way through because that's going to give us a nice even coating. That's another reason why I prefer to use an ink pad because a brush, with a brush you don't always get a nice even coating when you're printing. So messy finger time, I normally flip it over and then just work the back as well, making sure all the ink goes right the way through. So while I'm doing this, while you're watching, it'd be lovely to hear where you are uh, watching from today, where you are in the country or where you are in the world. Please drop in the comments and say hi, just as I finish off that our ink pad. So I'm happy that all the ink has been absorbed and there's no big blobs of paint on the surface. So that was just done with a jam jar lid and a piece of felt cut to size and a spoonful of fabric paint. So now I always do a little test print and it's a good idea as well because that's going to give you an idea of how firmly you need to place the cork down. So with my piece, scrap piece of fabric, I just use my cork, dab it slightly, and then onto the fabric. As I print, I just do a little circular motion, but without actually moving the cork. And that's going to make sure that you print in all the, all the way around the cork. And there, I'm quite happy with that print. So I'm happy to go. Now you may notice that this cork has got 
little lines in it. That just happened to be the way the cork was. And that made me really happy when I did my first print. But what you can do if you want to, you could mark some little lines just using a craft knife. Or if you quite like the natural effect, the uh, proper corks also have a bit of a mottled surface. So that will give you some really nice texture as well if you don't want a solid print. So now I can print because I'm happy with my test print. So back to my crease free, almost crease free napkin. So when I print by eye, I always start in the middle. What you can do if you want to, if you if you like things really perfect, is to mark out with a ruler, just with a slight um, pencil mark where you want to put your circles. But I'm quite happy to print them just by eye. But as I said, I always start in the middle. And to find my center, I fold the fabric. And then I fold it again. And that will give me my center mark. You can probably just see there that little cross in the middle. So taking my ink pad, dab the surface, and then slightly pressing down in a circular motion, but not rotating, I make my first print. So I'm gonna go with a polka dot design, but again, because it's all very, I'm printing by eye, it's all quite, let's say rustic. So I'm not too worried about things being in a, in a line or not. I always start in the middle and then move out because that's going to give you some chance of getting a fairly good print. Oh, and try not to get over enthusiastic and drop your cork. So carrying on with the polka dots. I'm just going above the line and then in about the middle. As I said, we're going to keep it rustic and I'm happy with that. So if you're after a slightly more um, advanced technique, stick around because I'm going to show you how to carve the cork using a craft knife and also to make a felt stamp and use panel pins to attach it to the cork. And what's great is that these corks can just be washed and used again and again. This is the beauty as well of having an ink pad. So you can get it done so quickly. You don't have to go back and paint the cork each time. my finger this is great as well if you've got napkins that maybe have just got that that little t mark stain that you just can't get out then you can stamp over the stain and no one has to know it's there And plain napkins can sometimes be quite difficult to get hold of, I've found. So I actually made mine. You just need to use a good quality cotton that you know is going to be absorbent. And if you'd like to have a look at my website, I printed that.com, then there's a tutorial how to make them and how to get these nice mitered corners as well. So just go to the blog. Um, I've just done a new blog post tutorial that tells you how to make them. So that's my basic um, foundation done with my polka dot. I'm just going to fill that one in there, I think. So now I'm going to go in with a slightly different colour. And because it's not all perfect, this is really good because it's going to take away from that fact. So I'm just going to clean off my cork, turn it over to the other side, and now I'm going to print in green. 
Ideally, I'd let this dry or just dry it off with a hairdryer. But just for the purposes of today, I'm going to go straight in. And as I print, I just have a look at the whole structure and maybe just start, I start anywhere really. And then just keeping an eye, so keeping it balanced, but not too precise. And I'll print over some of those marks that I made when I drop the cork. Let's go for one on its own there. So have you already started planning who you're going to meet up with and where you're going to meet up outside socially distance? Is it friends? Is it family? And what are you planning on doing? So my mum, my sister, my sister-in-law and my nieces, we are definitely planning an afternoon tea in my mum's garden. And the weather is looking stunning for the next week. So that is always a bonus. So I'm just going to finish off. I just want a bit of balance to my design. So I just need another one along the top. And I'm going to just put one along the, the bottom as well, just to, just to have, um, just to balance that out. Yeah, so that is one of our napkins done really quickly, just using a cork and some fabric paint. Okay, so the, for the next one, I'd like to show you how you can carve your cork to make different shapes. So let me pop that out of the way. Okay, I'm gonna get my piece of test cloth ready and I'm just gonna pop you down again so you can see. So I take my cork and then I just draw a shape on it. So I'm just going to go with a simple square. But you like, might like to go with something a little more complicated. And I'm just using a pencil. To draw those lines. And then I'm going to use a craft knife. Just score the lines. Don't cut right the way through yet because you could end up cutting yourself. So I'm just scoring the lines. And again, this can be used with a plastic cork or a cork, a natural cork. So now I've got those score marks, I can cut from the outside. Cut down a little bit more. And you'll see that bit will come away. And we've done that nice and safely. Just make some score marks again, a little bit deeper, and then cut around the side. neaten that up 
and there's another little stamp made with a cork and I will just show you using the ink pad again and my test print and same uh, way we printed before just move, just giving it a circular motion as you print but not actually moving it so you could make some checks you can make some gingham napkins with this you don't have to fill the whole napkin you could maybe just do a border or just something in the center Let's print like that so that's how to carve a cork to make a little stamp and then the next way using another cork can i just say um i have actually saved these corks up over quite a long period of time they weren't they weren't just from the weekend um so i just need to get so to make the felt stamp I draw around my cork and my cat's just come into the room. <laughs> so he'll be wanting to get involved in a minute. Yes, it's live. <laughs> That's it. So I've drawn around my cork so I know what size design to do. And for this one, I'm going to do maybe just a star. So I'm drawing with a pen. And then I find these embroidery or cotton scissors really good because they're so sharp. And because it's quite a small design, you can really get into the corners. So I just cut round and then cut out my star shape. Cat settled down now, that's good. Just trim that off. So there's my star shape just cut out of the felt. Then taking a very small panel pin, place it on top. and then using what feels like the biggest hammer in the world for the smallest pin. So just knock it in. Now I don't want to go right the way in because I want to use this cork again for another stamp. So that's gonna make it easier to get out. But also if you put it right the way in, then you'll end up with an indentation on your print. Now for this one, I would suggest using a brush because if you use the ink pad, then there's a good chance that the ink will end up printing here and you won't get a very defined print. So I'm just going in with my fabric paint and I'm going to, I'm going to paint the felt. So this technique takes a little bit longer than the first technique that I showed you. But it just means you can add a little bit more interest if you're a bit bored with circles or you want to do something a bit different. So I'm just painting, making sure there's a good even coverage. Use my test fabric and again 
print with a circular motion, but not actually moving it. And there you can get a star. So I just need to, that's, um, that's why we do test print, just, just so we can uh, make sure there's any bits that we might need to tidy up. So I'm just going to tidy up the edges. So for those afternoon teas or those cream teas that you're planning, I would, I would always go for a scone. It's always got to be clotted cream, always got to be strawberry jam. But the question is, do you put the jam on first or do you put the cream on first? Now, I don't want to start World War Three here, um, but it would be really interesting to know how many people do it, which way. And also, if anyone can remind me, is it Devon put it on first, put the cream on first, or is it Cornwall who put the cream on first? So yeah, definitely looking forward to those oh, afternoon teas outside with small groups of friends and family. So I'm just gonna do a couple more tests before I start actually printing because it takes a little bit more time for the felt to take the fabric paint than it does for the cork that we just used at the beginning. Ah, a little bit more paint. <laughs> Okay, this feels like it's going to be the one. There we go. Okay, so are you ready to go and dust off those tea sets to make some napkins to print some napkins um, and meet up with your friends and family again thank you so much for watching today i hope that's really inspired you to have a go at printing using some really basic equipment and um, have an amazing week and i hope you have a lovely time with your friends and family thank you ever so much for watching i'm rachel from i printed that and i will see you again soon bye